So we'll go ahead and get started, but I'll just introduce myself first. So my name is Ava. Um, I'm a junior uh, studying computer science engineering and the peer advisor for computer science engineering. Um, and today we're joined by um, the Michigan Students Artificial Intelligence Lab, MSAIL. Um, so do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Saad. I'm co-president education lead of the Michigan Student Artificial Intelligence Lab. I'm a sophomore studying computer science at the University of Michigan. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so to get us started off, could you talk a little about what is MSAIL um, and maybe about what types of majors um, and people are in this organization? Yeah, MSAIL stands for the Michigan Student Artificial Intelligence Lab. We host a lot of different events and initiatives. We have a reading group talk where essentially speakers come and talk about their research. We've had a lot of different professors come in and CEOs such as Edwin Olson, the CEO of May Mobility. We have an education section where essentially um, students get to learn stuff or a material of AI education and then replicate a research paper. So this semester we're planning on learning the material of the research paper, um, deep CNNs with the ImageNet data set. And also we have a project section where students um, kind of learn the practical step-by-step -step process of applying um, AI projects. And this semester, we're doing music recommendation through the Spotify API. And we also have a socials initiative where, uh, yeah, students get to basically meet each other and get some really good food. And yeah. Cool. That's a perfect overview. Um, so you mentioned that you have different um, talks and educational programs um, and also social events. Um, could you talk about if they're on like specific dates um, and maybe like some other examples and maybe your favorite ones that you've been to? Yeah, so we have our education projects weekly from six to seven at East Quad. Um, I believe both rooms are at East Quad 1506. Um, yeah, these are at six to seven p.m. Um, they meet weekly. They really build off one another. So joining now might be a little tough, but we're definitely um, accepting rolling members and um, yeah and I guess something that I think that I like the most about these education project meetings are just really the community you can build and the cool stuff that we can do for example we do a lot of like Google collab work where we work and get our hands dirty with TensorFlow and we can actually like code like CNNs and stuff like that. That's really cool. Um, and then you mentioned a lot of like technical words um, that are probably with AI. Um, do you need skills to before you join, um, you know, a team or is there a requirement? Yeah, um, so our club is really like beginner focused because we know that usually the people who want to join these clubs are like freshmen and sophomores is really mm -hmm. trying to get a good overview of AI. So our, our like uh, application process is really like um, it's really open there's really no application process anyone can join and we accept all types of people beginners intermediate advanced and we're really beginner focused um, and then I also wanted to ask about time commitment um, especially for you as a CS student how has it been you know managing being on a project and going to talks and stuff um, and then what is like the expected time commitment um, from the club? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's really like what you put in is what you get out of it. Um, but a general baseline is um, around one to two hours a week. So we have for education meetings or project meetings and uh, reading group talks usually twice a month. Usually students pick one of projects or education. Some go to both, but usually uh, students just pick one of them and usually yeah they're just expected to go to that meeting usually we don't expect any homework or like outside of the club work because we understand that a lot of these students are just really busy and it's just not like feasible to do so um so depending on what they plan to do it's usually around one to two hours a week um and then you mentioned that you have different projects um that you guys work on um you mentioned one with spotify um could you talk more maybe about what those projects you currently have um and maybe some past projects that you've done yeah so as of right now um we have our music recommendation through spotify api project through the po project section uh education we don't have a specific project but we're trying to replicate a research paper mm -hmm. and use like 
what they've done, what their the main purpose of the research paper was to uh, develop CNNs using the embedded data set and using different like machine learning techniques such as dropout and stuff like that. So basically we plan for our education members to do something along the lines of that. Previously, we've done um, housing prices regression project. It's a classic one on Kaggle. Um, back in my day, like when I joined this club in high school, like virtually since everything was in the pandemic, I did an ASR project, which was an automated speech recognition project. Really cool, that's awesome. Um, and then what types of professional opportunities um, can members gain from MCO? Yeah, so um, as of right now, I feel like our reading group talks is a good way for our members to network with people um, just kind of above. Like for example, our reading group talks, um, we've had Professor Olson um, and Professor Wellman talk. And Professor Wellman is like the head of the CS department, I believe. So just getting him to talk and then a lot of students talk with him afterwards, that's um, a pretty good professional opportunity they could have. Professor Olson is also a professor here and he's the CEO of Main Mobility. It's a multi-million dollar company. So just being able to talk to these guys and then also just the material like you kind of learn in this organization is in itself a professional opportunity. Um, and then going off that too, what types of like leadership opportunities are there available um, for students or members when they're like more um, involved in it? Yeah, sure. Um, so um, our admin applications are out as of right now. And admin basically means being a leader of this organization. Um, we have a lot of different leaders who do different stuff. For example, I'm the co-president education lead. So I'm kind of double downing on two different initiatives um, and different initiatives that we, that we have that can like kind of su support leadership opportunities are our research initiative, our uh, education initiative, our research reading group talks and our socials, um, also finance. And yeah, there's some other roles. So we definitely have a lot of research um, leadership opportunities and definitely if anyone's interested, we have, um, a Google form and our weekly updates that um, is an application to be a leader for this organization. Perfect. Um, and then you mentioned earlier um, that basically anyone can join no matter your experience um, and you know your background, um, but is there a specific way that students need to join? Like is there a form they should fill out or um, a, like place they should go to? Yeah, so in the past for one semester we kind of had this cohort um, which was an application process, but we decided that we really wanted to be an inclusive environment. There's a lot, of, I, I know that I, myself and my friends and other people like apply to clubs that they really want to get into. And the selection process sometimes is a little bit arbitrary. So we just want to be inclusive and anyone who really wants to join this organization can. So there's no like application process at all. Awesome. Um, do you have any events coming up, um, I guess, like before the semester ends that people would be able to attend? I know you mentioned it's kind of hard to join in the middle of semester, um, but maybe, I guess, for next semester too. Yeah. Yeah, so our education projects, it's a little hard to join right now, but our reading group talks, definitely you can join anytime. We have a reading group talk coming today, actually, 6 to 7 at the at East Quad B8. B814 is the room. Um, it's with Jacob Cross, he's the president of the Michigan AI Safety Initiative. Um, we also have another reading group talk with um, a PhD candidate next Tuesday from 6 to 7 at East Quad. So those are two events that anyone can kind of join right now. Perfect. Um, and then to kind of end things, um, I wanted to ask what your favorite thing or your favorite memory has been from MCL. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, just like the community and the people like you meet, I mean, that might be a little cl cliche, but I just started learning like AI and machine learning in high school, like kind of by myself. And I don't know, it was a little bit lonely at times. Like I like it definitely help if I had like some people, if I could do it with, or just um, an overall like support or like community. And this is kind of what this club does. Um, it gets a group of people together to learn some cool stuff about AI. So being able to kind of facilitate that is something that I kind of enjoy because back in the day, like in high school, I really wish I had something like that. That's awesome. 
Well, thank you so much for joining us and giving us a great overview of MSAIL. It sounds like there's a lot of great professional, educational, um, and leadership opportunities as well. So I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye.